Hello my soulmates! I think I should call you like this because we all here love environmental movies. This already is my fourth video and I have not reviewed any documentary so far. Shame on me! So my name is Daria and you are watching Eco Darius. For today's video I decided to choose documentary which is very different from any others. Because usually when you're watching environmental doc documentaries, they are so intimidating. They're all telling us about all detrimental effects of environmental degradation, how air pollution and water poisoning can drastically decrease our years on Earth. And after you finish those documentaries, you feel like, oh my god, everything is so bad, like <laughs> we are gonna die. For sure and uh, why I was born do I need to have my kids because everything is so bad with the environment like you know typical Monday thoughts but this movie is something totally different after finishing it you will be so inspired to work and to act towards you know future that uh, creator of this movie depicted and this is 2014. Yes, just a year, but believe me, there are so many things in it. So don't watch my review before you watch the movie. Seriously, shut down my video and go watch because you, you would miss a very important part of your life. And for the one who already watched, you know what you need to do. Make yourself a cup of tea or coffee. Let's start. Twenty Forty is a 2019 Australian documentary directed by and starring Damon Gamow. He imagines what life could be for his four-year-old daughter 20 years from now if we could solve the climate crisis. Gamow travels around the world investigating numerous inventions already in place that can contribute towards climate mitigation so his daughter and other children featured in the film can live in a safer, cleaner and more equitable world. 2040 points to a practical, achievable path towards solutions, but its most important contribution is the sense that change is possible. Splendid, right? So the main idea of 2040 movie is inventions and approaches that could drastically improve our current environmental situation. Damon says that empowerment of girls and women education, um, regenerative farming, permacultures, uh, renewable energy, secular economy are the basis for sustained and harmonized coexistence between people and nature in 2040. At the beginning of the movie, creators let us know that all carbon emissions generated during the production of the film have been offset with certified carbon credits. What does it mean? In my Instagram blog, I made a post about it a long time ago, so please find me on Instagram, subscribe, there are many more information about this, but here an explanation. CO2 offset is a voluntary scheme containing offsetting your part of the emissions that your flights produce. Some of the indicators to calculate the compensation are the class of travel, the type of aircraft, fuel efficiency, the number of passengers it holds, and the occupancy rate. The offsetting money will be invested in projects dedicated to down carbon dioxide level. A forestry or energy project, good in theory, hard in practice. Unfortunately, this system is not transparent enough and is not very good for a large group of tourists. But these companies like Brussels Airlines, KLM, Australian Airlines are already doing it, so check them out. Now let's discuss all innovations in the movie. First thing, we are flying to Bangladesh and meet a representative of the company SoulShare. I really hope that those companies didn't pay to be in the movie because 
Uh, good. Soul Share is a decentralized electricity transmission system based on the household solar panels. In every house, there are batteries that store electricity and a transmitter that uh, exchange electricity with neighbors or other communities. More households are involved in the system, more the system become reliable. And like in theory, you can even sell a surplus energy to the national transmission electricity grid. I'm not sure if government will be so happy to hear about it, but anyway, in a, in a theory it's possible. Also the good thing about this innovation is that all income stays within the community. Before SolShare, for example, for this you know, rural area, people were using kerosene, which is very expensive and very unhealthy. I also don't think that this innovation could be very good for energy intensive industries like metallurgy, but for the rural area, for households, for little commercial shops, like, why not? Let's see what happened in 2040. Then in the movie, Damon depicts uh, the possible future of his daughter, which is willing to donate surplus energy rather than to sell, because she's not going to be at home for four days. So noble. Damon is also thinking a lot about work, labor and employment. That's like <laughs> very important questions. We know that so many people are involved in employment within the fossil fuels industry. Even they're not sincerely support this type of industry. They just need to make money for a living. And uh, Damon suggests that governments should help those people to retrain and find new jobs in the new renewable energy industry. Once the energy issue of the future is settled, Damon is thinking about transportation. I don't know why, uh, for the single film shot in the traffic jam, they needed to go to New York and then we are flying right to Singapore. I don't know, isn't it wasteful? But anyway, in Singapore, we review the idea of driverless cars on request. The idea is that people could find driverless transport more attractive comparing to, you know, uh, owning and using uh, personal cars. In theory, it means that we will have less traffic jams, less uh, traffic fumes, less parking lots and less roads. Eventually, we decrease the use in internal combustion vehicles and then the oil prices go down and uh, finally all oil extracting region will turn to parks. Damon says it would be possible to hear bird songs in the city center. You know, I would love to see the faces of Arab and Russian businessmen who made a fortune on oil. And they will be like, shh, 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 shh. what is it? Please, shut down all pumps. I want to hear that bird. The next invention Damon is reviewing in the movie is regenerative agriculture. And I should admit this is my favorite idea in the movie. So what is it? It's an agro approach where you don't use chemicals, fertilizers or pesticides at all, but planting several types of crops in the soil to make them regenerate the soil naturally with carbon and microorganisms for one season. For the next season, you plant, you know, like more commercially beneficial crops to sell, and then the cycle repeats. Soil with regenerative farming is rich in natural nutrients, better store carbon, and better absorb water. Plus, free grazing. Farmers who support regenerative farming highlight the necessity for livestock to consume crops right from the fields, not corns in cattle housing. And let's less consume meat. Uh, I'm not a pro-vegan, I love meat, but I'm also into responsible meat consumption. When you decrease your daily portion to like 50 grams, 
meat per day. The movie says so also. Next, we are moving to explore marine permaculture with the Climate Foundation Company. This practice is based on the principle of recreating seaweed forest habitats and other ecosystems in nearshore and offshore ocean environments. By doing so, seaweeds improve the quality of water, attract marine organisms, contribute to the biodiversity in the coastal area. As a bonus, seaweeds are suitable for consumption. Have you ever tried seaweed? Tell me in the comment section. And the final one, it's not an invention, actually it's an approach, but it's about education. There are like two branches that Damon describes. One is environmental education for kids in schools using a special eco board. And the second one is empowerment of girls and women's education. And I totally agree with him. So according to the opinion of the next economy company, free access to education, access to reproductive health care, an opportunity to get a decent job will allow a girl to choose to postpone pregnancy if she wants and to have fewer children. This would eventually lead to a decline in population growth and facilitated access to vital resources like water, food and land. Then children of this educated woman will also, you know, study longer and uh, understand how, you know, world exists. And uh, then finally they can break out the cycle of poverty. You know, there is a saying that when you educate a man, you educate only one man. When you educate a woman, you educate an entire generation. So I agree with this. I like know so many uh, examples when two well-educated men got into a fight, violent fight, or even a war, but two well-educated women never gonna happen. These were all um, innovations and approaches Damon mentioned and promoted in his movie, but of course it's not the finalized list of those innovations, there are many more of them. But for example, he also mentioned the Swedish waste management system with the, uh, you know, those vacuum garbage containers and the extraction of methane out of the garbage and then using this methane to fuel public transport. That's, I, I, I can't believe that this technology is existing and it's not broadly implemented at least in the capital cities. I, I, I can't believe, I can't believe. And finally, actually, I also would like to draw your attention to the picnic. Uh, do you remember there was a picnic among teenagers and they were using so many handy green items that I also should mention to you. This is not an advertisement because I will give the name of those company providing these uh, inventions. Uh, because no one paid me for this. Like, for example, the mushroom cooler. The company Paradise Packaging Eco produces this cooler to store temperature-sensitive products without the use of plastic forms. These boxes are made from Malden mycelium fungus and they are fully home compostable in soils. Then there were also bioplastic container uh, made from seaweeds. For example, the company Notpla is providing such packaging, like sachet for ketchup, packaging for juices, water and alcohol, edible packaging for sport events, takeaway boxes and many more. They are all recyclable and home compostable. Next, we see the spider silk sneakers. I think the companies like Adidas have already done it in 2016, probably. So thanks God it's, it's an artificial spider silk, because real spiders would not be happy with such walking conditions. Adidas is saying that those sneakers are fully biodegradable, but do you, according to your opinion actually, what do you think, what is better? Um, sneakers 
which are biodegradable or sneakers made from the ocean plastic. Because who will guarantee that while I'm doing a sport, my sneakers will not de biodegrade? It's important. So I'm like more from ocean plastic sneakers. What about you? Next, there is a skateboard made from a fishing net. Again, I'm advertising my Instagram because a long time ago I made a post about this company. <laughs> I love that, you know, we're on the same page with Damon. Company called Plastics. Plastic transforms used obsolete and abandoned fishing nets, ropes and posts use rigid plastic that would previously have ended up in the ocean or in landfills. By mechanically recycling them into the high-quality raw plastic material. After sorting and fractioning, they shred, wash, separate and dry the material. Lastly, the compound is extruded into new green plastic raw materials, also called pellets. After plastics enables creative and innovative producers and designers to create sustainable and green products like cell phones, bikes, cream containers and skateboards and many, many more others. Then there is a bearing. Seawater brewery manufactures beer rings made from barley and wheat ribbons from the brewing process. So can you imagine a turtle who's not stuck in those beer rings but eat them and having a good time? <laughs> nice. And finally, compostable single-use cups. There are hundreds of companies providing and manufacturing such cups. It's not a problem to find them, but I love the idea that every single use item is made from fully compostable uh, material and it has zero harm to the environment. You know, I love when something is not harming the environment, like you, for example. <laughs> okay, after we have discussed on innovations, there is also a website that should be mentioned. The movie release was featured with a special online platform where all positive contributions from the film are listed. On this website, you can activate your action plan to donate and bring to life your 2040 future. There are also educational courses, successful stories of farmers, girls' education empowerment ideas, seaweed planting and so and so. So if you like the story Damon told us, go to his website and support his initiatives. And let me share my opinion about this movie. I like the fact that Damon doesn't scold us. He is just passionately telling about existing solutions. I'm sure we need to be ready for our children scolding us. I'm not, I will not be surprised, for example, when my child will come to me holding, you know, 2040 movie uh, on her laptop and, and asking, hey, look what future we could have if you acted in this direction. Why you didn't do it? What were you thinking? And so and so. So be ready for those questions um, because they're gonna happen. I love 2014 movie. It's a bit naive. It uh, shows our future through, you know, optimistic glasses. Those glasses are not pink. They're green. So it's not a fairy tale. This should be our goal for the next generations. So what do you think about this movie? I'm willing to know your opinion. So that's all from me now. Thank you again to be on my channel and watching my video. Um, don't forget about your likes and subscription and see you next week. Mwah. Пока-пока!